I want to make sure that you know how to do oxidation numbers. This is a very important part of what we do in AP chemistry, especially in one of the latter chapters where we do electrochemistry. So here's the practice that we did. I just want to walk through it so you'll have me uh, doing it to go back and so you can look at it and study with it. Number one, we have bromine two. Anytime you have a single element, you can almost assume that element is in its natural state. So don't stress when you see the subscripts for an element. Most of the time they're not trying to trick you. And if any element in its natural state is going to have an oxidation number of zero. The electrons are shared equally and both atoms are exactly the same. If we come over here to number four, it's a little different. We have a P4. You're not used to seeing P4s, but some nonmetals do come in little tiny clusters. That is the natural state for phosphorus, and it's also got an oxidation number of zero. Don't freak out about this. There's only a few. You have you know, the seven diatomics. Sulfur comes in packets of eight, so if you ever see an S8, that's fine. Sulfur has an oxidation number of zero. And there's a few others, like ozone. If you ever see an O3, that's fine. That's a natural state of oxygen. Not the most common one, but it's natural. And it's also got an oxidation number of zero. So just be wary of those. Otherwise, when we look at normal compounds, the thing that you should always do is find which element in that compound you can begin with. If it's not an alkali metal or an alkaline earth metal, which are always the same oxidation state, you need to find the most electronegative element in that compound and do all your calculations based on it. So this is a regular ionic compound. In ionic compounds, the charge and the oxidation number are exactly the same. So of the two, a metal and a nonmetal, the nonmetal will always be more electronegative. So let's treat phosphorus just like it was monatomic and think, what would phosphorus want to be? Well, it has five valence electrons, so it wants to complete an octet by gaining three. So if it gains three electrons, it'll have an oxidation number of minus three, a charge of minus three. Then we can just solve for cobalt, do a little algebra, 2x plus one negative three equals zero. Remember the zero comes from the charge, if any. There's nothing there, so it's a neutral compound, zero. Let's finish our algebra, 2x plus a negative 3 equals 0. X equals, and this will freak you out maybe, positive 1 half. You can actually have fractional oxidation numbers. Most of the time in AP Chem you will not, but especially if you go into organic chemistry, frequently carbon will have partial charges. So that's okay, though rare, it's fine. Let's go to number three, and here we have an yttrium sulfite. A couple of ways, this is the one on the quiz that gave us some trouble because some of you might look at that and go, well, I don't know what Y is, and I also don't know what sulfur could be. But right away, you should know that oxygen is negative two. A couple of ways to approach this is that you can figure sulfur out first by saying, okay, SO3 sulfite is an ion with a minus 2 charge and then let sulfur be your X. You can do that. Or if you remember the presentation I did on polyatomic ions, I know that if this is sulfite, sulfur is one oxygen less than its maximum oxidation state. Sulfur has six valence. Its maximum oxidation state is plus six. So it would get the eight suffix. If we're an ite, that means you're one oxygen less, which is always two less on your charge. So I know right away, without doing any work, that sulfur is going to be plus four. Again, if you don't remember that, then just do this way. And we'll solve for x. Alright, so doing that, 
I need a little room. So let me find the eraser real quick. Get rid of this. All right, so we have 2x plus 3 times 4 for sulfur plus 9 times negative 2, and they all add up equals 0. So that is 2x plus 12 minus 18 equals 0. Do all the algebra, and we come out and we find a plus 3 which is perfectly reasonable for a transition metal. Okay, continuing on here, in number 5 we have something similar. However, this time we have zinc. And zinc is a transition metal, so you might think it could have possible oxidation states. But most of the time, almost 99% you know, of the time, zinc is one of those you just always know. Zinc is always plus 2 in its charge, so therefore its oxidation state is almost always plus 2. And then again, here we have a polyatomic ion, so here oxygen is the most electronegative element. It's going to be minus 2. And then either we can solve for arsenic, arsenic, or, again, we have ASO4. Arsenic is in the same column as phosphorus. So if we know PO4 is phosphate, an element in the same column is going to follow the same pattern. So we know that's going to be arsenate. And in any 8, we're going to have maximum oxidation number. So 5 valence electrons means a plus 5. So you could actually do that one without any work. Or again you could solve, solve for the X here since you know zinc. Well number 6 you have a little bit more of an issue. If you are familiar enough with your polyatomic ions to recognize Cr207, life will be a lot more, a lot easier for you. That is the dichromate polyatomic ion. Again, oxygen is most electronegative, so we'll have a negative 2 charge. And my best suggestion for this one is to actually bring your, your dichromate out to the side and solve for your chromium. The same rules apply. This is a chrome 8, dichrome 8. It ends in ATE, so it's going to have maximum oxidation state for the chromium. Well, chromium is not a p-block element, so the idea of maximum oxidation state is not quite as straightforward. Uh, if you find chromium on the periodic table, you'll see that it's in the fourth column of the D-block. So that means it has, it's going to have an S1, S2, the four Ds. So I'm going to predict with those two S's and four D's, it has six electrons it can lose and it's going to be plus six. But let's see. Two X for the chromium plus seven negative twos equals, this time we have an ion, so it's going to equal negative two. Two X minus 14 equals negative two. Two X equals 12 and then we see X is actually plus 6. Now the manganese becomes pretty easy. Again this is an ionic compound so ion charges are the same as oxidation numbers for ionic compounds. If dichromate is a negative 2 charge and I only have one manganese it has to be equal and opposite charge so that's a plus 2. Alright number 7 is one of the harder ones here this is an organic compound, it's not ionic, so we can't look at just what carbon wants to be. Of the two, carbon is the most electronegative, barely. Carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5 and oxygen, uh, sorry, hydrogen somewhere around 2.1, I forget exactly, but relatively speaking, they're close and carbon just, just beats it out. So I know hydrogen can only